also, uh, Tim, uh, I don't think I exaggerate when I tell our audience that the VC80000 is your child, right? <laughs> Not just me, but I have been involved from a very early stage. And uh, this is, uh, I think I might have mentioned, this is my 20th year in, in production inkjet, and particularly high-speed inkjet. And uh, this is about the fourth generation of technology. And I can genuinely say that this is the most exciting machine that I've ever been involved in. And the great thing about it, because now we're going to have a walkthrough of the yep. machine and understand what it does. It's basically that is a very fast machine, very high quality machine. And if you look at also the competition, it's a, I would say it's probably the newest generation of everybody's machines right now, right? Sure, I mean, there were several topics there, but um, in terms of speed, what, what I think is important rather than the actual maximum speed is the fact that we can achieve the quality and the drying uh, with that full speed. So total productivity is more important than absolute speed. Should we have a look at it? Indeed. So, I mean, in this configuration, we're going to see something really exciting, but let's start. We have a Techno Unwinder here. Yep, so Techno Unwinder, typical Unwinder. We can also connect an auto splicer. Yep. I'll explain that perhaps when we get into the machine. Yep. Um, but the first point yep. is an undercoat. Um, and an undercoat is entirely optional. Uh, now we, we print both with and without undercoat depending on the paper. Uh, and sometimes it's much more efficient to use a paper without undercoat. Yep. But sometimes you have to use a specific paper. And, and the undercoat we, is helpful. And as we spoke about when we spoke about the set 75, yep. the undercoat is the same as a primer, basically, right? It is. And that yes. is ensures the stability for yep. that print Indeed. job on the paper, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. So Great. It's, it's it's also useful for uncoated paper yep. um, because ink, the ink obviously is very absorbent, or the paper is very absorbent. Um, so the undercoat gives a nice stable platform for that. And then we get to the first printing unit, and we have actually got a permission to open the door so we can take a little bit look inside. Yep. So, we will look at the DFE on the second uh, unit, right? Indeed, we'll yeah. go straight to the uh, yeah. the engine itself. Yeah. Beautifully laid out, right? Yeah, so I think the first thing to see is that it's an incredibly industrial design. Yeah. It's made for uh, mass production not over many, of, many years. Not a lot of plastic here, right? Not a lot of plastic at all. Yeah. No, very solid construction. So we've got the paper coming in at the top here, going underneath the foreheads, typical CMYK. Um, and then going into our patented dryer. And I think the dryer technology is one where Rico is very proud and rightly proud because the, the patents in how we take the moisture away from the paper really is the key to the productivity on this machine. And I think um, also for people to understand that what you see when you see the flashing lights here on the dryer unit is basically instead of having one huge centralized drying unit, you basically have a lot of smaller units that makes it much more capable of drying it faster because you yeah. can dry after each layer of, uh, of process, basically. Yeah, so what you're talking about is, is our firefly dryers. Fireflies, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and there's no actual fireflies. No actual no, fireflies. No animals harmed in this film. Exactly. <laughs> so it has two benefits. As you say, one is the absolute drying capacity, yeah. but also it enables the dryer to get up to temperature much quicker by heating smaller rollers rather than one big drum, as you say. Yeah. And then it goes. I mean, that's also because you have the turning bar for getting made in a perfection print, right? Uh, no, that happens after the first engine. Oh, yeah, we have, oh, yeah, we have two engines. Engine. Yeah, uh, so on this machine, after the dryer, yeah. the first thing we do is chill the paper. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And these are two chiller rollers, which try and take the heat back to pretty much as the paper came in okay. so that it's stable again before it gets to the second engine. And that's just cold water, basically? Um, it is chilling fluids, chilling but fluids. Yeah, essentially okay. water. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. And the other key parts to, to focus on here um, are both um, a camera system yeah. and a spectrophotometer. Okay. So again, like in the Litho press, we yeah. can measure color and correct yeah. color in real time. And the camera system is really recording everything from, from jet outs to uniformity to alignment and doing that in real time and making corrections in real time. And this is the really unique feature uh, and offers huge benefits from automation. And that of course also means that, because I mean, what a printer should really be cautious about when they invest is how many good sheets they can produce, right? Yeah, absolutely. And every, every sheet that comes out of the machine has this quality insurance because of these systems, right? Yeah, everything's captured and, and say, corrected, so you can be really sure that what comes out at the end is usable print. Yeah. All right, so then the paper goes after it's chilled, it goes under the drying section here. Yes. 
and then you get into then he the, goes to a turn bar to the turn bar i was yep. a little bit too fast before yeah right? yeah but one then, uh, one other thing to perhaps mention is how compact this printer oh, is yeah, yeah. it is only nine meters from end to end yeah. um without any finishing devices of yeah, course yeah. and that you know, that's probably less than half of some of the um, other machines in this area yeah so and yeah, the as you say, the turning bar is a simple like analog turning device, exactly. like we know from every every yep. every, every other yeah, yeah, yeah. two engine yeah. uh, printer yeah, in, yeah, in the world. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and here we have a exact same unit as the first one, but here we have the doors closed, and now we can look at the DFE, right? Yep, identical print engine, as you say. The DFE is your window into the machine, and is what allows you to control the machine. So this first screen is where we submit jobs, and we can see what's going on. Um, but what this screen also does is. Um, gives you access to the um, inspection system. If I can make that go bigger, there we are. So this is uh, from the cameras you spoke about there. So that's actual print actually. Yeah, exactly. And you can zoom in as you saw, yeah. and you can check print quality. But what this camera system is also doing, and this is really the unique feature of the VC80000, is this is what's capturing the information for automation. So when we print patterns, you know, we, we insert, insert test pages in, in the print run, and that measures everything you can think of on, on this machine and corrects in real time, as I was explaining. But what it also allows you to do is do what's called a smart start. And that's a single button press to make the machine ready or to restabilize the machine. So if you have any problems, you can use smart start to take you back to where was a good point. It's almost like a control out delete on, on a laptop. So Tim, uh, when you have a camera system that we just spoke about over there, and you see these nice images on the screen, what does it do? I mean, what what is what is the reason for doing it? I mean, I guess you can reject bad um, print, or you can make nozzle corrections and things like that. But tell yeah. me a little bit about how it works, actually. Well, it, it, it will record if it sees a problem. It will uh, alert an operator. It will give you the option of stopping or letting the machine stop itself, run the smart start that I was talking about earlier, and restart, or all the the operator can just go and inspect and check whether it really is something that you need to stop for. Very often it will pick up something that actually doesn't need you to stop. Yeah. So, and I, yeah. and I realized that there's a small QR code up there yes. that is reading. So is that also to control when you have to get onto the next job, something like that? Or? Yeah, so you can obviously program different areas of the page to record. Um, this is both checking color registration, is also checking front to back. Um, as I said, we automatically correct front back registration, but also checking that the right page is on the back so that you don't get any mismatch of data. Yeah, fantastic. And uh, it seems very easy to use. Is that something that uh, Rico has developed yourself? Or? Yeah, so the, this DFE is based upon the original DFE that was on the very first okay. um, continuous feed machine. But um, after a few upgrades, right? A few upgrades, after exactly. Upgrades, yeah, okay. all developed in our development center in Boulder. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, let's move on. Okay. Because we have, now we are at the end of the machine. Yes. And um, in this configuration, you have a concept of remoistering unit. So we spoke about that, how the papers cool down, but that doesn't give it the relative humidity back. So that is what this do, right? That's exactly what this is doing. You're, you're re-stabilizing the paper so that the humidity after the moisturizing unit is similar to the point when it went in to try and give you nice flat sheets for finishing. What I like about what we're going to see now is uh, pretty amazing because you have a turn bar here and you can basically set it up to run uh, roll to roll, or you can have it into where you have the buffer, and then you have another turn bar that can either go to another roll. No, that, that's to allow the, um, a printed roll to be fed into the cutting oh, line, okay. so for oh, another okay. machine, for Okay, example. so that's an unwinder, basically. Yes, exactly. Okay, okay. Yeah. So uh, Tim uh, just saw the turn bar and also the unwinder from uh, offline production, right? And then you have this first signal unit. What, what is this? This is a simple tensioning unit to make sure that the paper is under the correct tension before it enters, then a big buffer unit. So there's uh, another buffer unit here. Yeah. And that is because uh, basically one of the advantages of the setup here, you can speed up both the printer and the binding equipment to match whatever is needed, right? Exactly, and this buffer allows the printer to carry on printing while the magic happens in the next cutting device, which is where we're able to change from one up to two up to three up. So th this allows, as I said, the printing to continue, the buffer fills, by that time, the, the, the knives have changed in the cutting device. And now we get into the Revolution 50 series cuts. The cutter. Yes. And the, this is actually where the magic happens, right? This is a new version of the Revolution 50 cutter, yeah. as you say. Uh, and what this is doing is not only variable cut length, 
but also changing knives across the web so that you can change from one up to two up to three up, as I said, all without the machine stopping. And that really is a unique feature at the moment. And I mean, that is like something that everybody should pay attention to because if you have that solution with that machine, for example, yeah. that basically means that you don't have to stop the machine. Let's say that you do postcards and you do uh, book covers and you do like, uh, leaflets or menu cards exactly. or whatever yep. basically you don't have to stop the machine uh, for changing all of these different formats no and again to refer back refer back to a piece of software i mentioned earlier batch builder by gathering all those jobs together on, oh, as long as they're approved on the same on paper yeah, then yeah. yeah you can still do those all those jobs without having to stop the printer and that also asks us uh, answer the question why the buffer is needed right because there's of course an analog process of changing the knives right yes. so, so it needs to have some kind of buffer in order to make that setup yeah so the paper here comes to a halt yeah which is why it needs to fill the buffer and and just before we uh, get to the stacker so when you have these knives i know that you're not a technical guy but i think you've seen it so many times so does that mean that these moves across uh, by the motors that basically make sure that yeah. reading the barcode reads the program exactly. and then it gets it. Yeah, the barcode is controlling everything. Yeah, yeah fantastic. So uh, now we have the, the the stacker here, right? Yes. And that's also quite unique and I think it's great to see because you have the ability to take the different sheet sizes and, and stack them in different batches where you can either offset the batches or you can have them stacked. Well, it, it, all jobs of the same size will eject first yeah, yeah. so that you then start a new stack yeah, with yeah, the yeah. Uh, with new size. Yeah. How, uh, I mean, you, you have been in the market for some years, so obviously you know uh, what people need. How important is this? Oh, I think this is a, a, a big step forward for turning inkjet into a, a real replacement for offset fantastic. because you can gather all those small jobs together. Fantastic. Well, fantastic. Um, we're just, just going to see the, the, the output in a moment, but uh, let's uh, just want to say thank you so far. Tim has been great getting this walkthrough of uh, your baby. Thank and you for the opportunity to show you. And a little addendum, right? Exactly. No, very important part of the solution. So, Tim, uh, seeing this wonderful VC80000, but I mean, I think there's so many printing companies that may think they know what's going on in the printing company, but you have actually some kind of tools that help people understanding what's actually going on. Yeah, and I think, as I mentioned earlier, software integration is as important as any of the hardware. Mm -hmm. And uh, the tool that we're going to uh, talk about now is called Rico Predictive Insight. Mm -hmm. And it's a way to, as you say, to give real evidence to every user as to what's happening with their machine. And, and I think it's great, sorry to interrupt you, but I think it's super great because we're actually talking about a software that is not just about Rico equipment, it's your entire production, right? Exactly, and it, it can link to third party devices. It's completely neutral in that respect. But clearly, it integrates very well with that uh, with Rico devices, and of, of course, course, we encourage people to connect Rico devices. Yeah. But you're right; it yeah. will connect to but anything. That is like an IoT tool that is that is basically giving, collecting all the information you need. So when you say predictive, I guess it's also like when do you need maintenance? Uh, when do you need to have service? So you can basically plan that around. Uh, so it costs you as little money as possible. Yeah. Right? So there's two two parts of what the tool provides, and as you say, one of it is predictive insight. And that is learning about the machine, learning how the machine is being used, then predicting failure, even predict or creating bespoke service um, programs based upon the use of the machine. So that basically means that, that let's say that we have a, a VC80,000 here and a Z75 on the other side, and you have that kind of, uh, let's say, data from these two machines, mm -hmm. it will give the printer the numbers to understand his business better for pricing, for uh, buying uh, consumables for all the things that he yep. basically needs to run his operation. Indeed, and I think one of the nice tools is that you can see differences in performance across the day and between shifts. You know, I've worked in a printing factory and I know full well that the night shift's not always as productive as uh, as the day shift. We're but... tired, Tim. <laughs> We're tired, right? <laughs> exactly. But by by analyzing how the machine has been used throughout the whole day, you can see where, you know, if you're losing lots of time when you change over shifts, for example, and therefore you can areas you can work on. Is this a software that's already in market or is that also brand new or? Uh, there are new aspects of it being developed all the time of course um, but it is based upon a previous tool which we have called Rico Supervisor oh. which which very much sums up what uh, what that was doing okay so basically that that people that see this this is an upgrade and for new customers it's basically to give them uh, a very let's say hardcore evidence on the productivity of your machine yeah and I think what's changing is the adoption of AI and particularly machine learning as, as 
every time the machine is being used, data is being captured, and that will be used to both improve the machine and improve the performance within each factory. Amazing. Remember in the good old times where a printing press, that was steel and nothing but, right? <laughs> I do, if those, I thought you remember those that Those days, time. they are old time, right? right? <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Well, wonderful tour. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your time.